going to tell you when I started the soft life in a relationship and how we just damn near went to hell in a hand basket that was already on fire. It took me straight to hell. It ended up taking me to a place of loss and a, and a place of grief. So what's going on in my world? So, hmm, let's see. I've been chilling. My mental state is okay. I am about to give y'all, it's a story time somewhat. It is more so a topic and then I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put my experience on it. So I'm pretty good. I just been chilling, working, getting stuff together. I'm ready for the next chapter of life, my birthday coming up. Before I even get into the story and I introduce myself and everything, I do want to give a trigger warning that this is going to be about some loss, some grief, loss of pregnancy, loss of, of, of child is going to be in here somewhere, most likely. So... I don't know how deep I'm going to go into it. However, I do want to put that disclaimer in. So if that is something, you know, that you're dealing with, I advise you to stick around because I got some things for you. I got some stuff out of the situation. I have a lot of other parental pregnancy things that will probably bounce off of this and I can end up giving you more story time. So if you can bear it, if you need to find some solace in loss of child pregnancy anything like that i do advise that you stick around if it is too heavy for you of course you can always skip this video i have other content that can probably help you in a different way is she on she's on <laughs> Girlies or whatever you identify as, it's your lover, homie, and best friend, Benedict. He look good and welcome. All right, so today we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about the soft life. We're gonna talk about pretty much. <laughs> 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 We're gonna talk about how the soft life got me, not stuck, but the soft life t taught me a hard lesson. Let's just say, let's just say that it had me dealing with the wrong person. Just, I'm gonna go over pretty much, you know, what the soft life is or what it means to me. Some some kind of definition, you know, how I even ended up participating in soft life culture soft life girly or whatever um how it manifested in my life and the relationship i was in and yeah how it just it took me straight to hell it ended up taking me to a place of loss and a, and a place of grief so yeah i'm going to go ahead and play a video that I have made on my TikTok. My soft life girlies in partnership, my boss babes, my black excellence overachieving black girls. Tap in with me really quick. Do y'all feel guilty for resting? Like I had to have a conversation with my partner and he, I guess he knows me well because he's like, I figured this house was this was gonna go. I pretty much thought I'm like I like the soft life. Like this, I love this for me because I'm so used to using the boss babe thing the wrong way. Like as a defense mechanism, like I've always had to be, had to lead in it. And my, my value came from my accomplishments, how exhausted I am and, and how much work you put in, how much you put out. And I'm like, bro, I want my farm. I want to be able to have a baby. And if six months, I don't want to do nothing but sit and gush over my baby and read books. I should be able to do that. And he's like, yes. Like my partner tells me to rest. My partner is like, you deserve that. Like life of ease. Okay. So, hmm. so I want to say that that did not age well. Now, I believe in soft life. I do believe in the in the soft life, okay? I am not um, an advocate. I'm not an advocate for struggle, and I'm I'm sorry. I I I will not negate the things that 
skin folk, skin folk women have to go through because of. I hope y'all can't hear that outside. Like, why are you, why, 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 why you decide to cut the grass now? Anyways, I'm not going to discredit what we go through because we're women of color. However, I also am not of the belief or I have not personally experienced struggle based solely on being a woman of color. So I do want to say that um, because I want to be open and transparent because if that's your experience, then, you know, talk to me in the comments. But so I do want to say that. I've been blessed in that way and my thinking is just not, I don't go into things thinking that my color is a disadvantage. It's just not my thinking. That's that. Okay, so in that video I was specifically talking about soft life girlies in partnership. I am not, let me say this at the beginning of this video, okay? I am not talking about obtaining a soft life through finessing men. I am not speaking to those that are obtaining a soft life through transaction, meaning the man just gives you money and that means you have a, a, a soft life. And I was going to be using soft life and life of ease interchangeably, but I'm not going to do that because you'll see. So in that post, it was pretty much saying how I have become accustomed to in my relationship is essentially leading overachieving and just boss 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 was it was being done in a toxic way I don't think there's anything wrong with you want to be a boss but it was being done in that hyper overly hyper way because I've never been able to be just soft in a relationship I've just I've never had that safety I've never had that that feeling whether it comes from and I think it's both so whether it comes from the partners I was with or because of what I have gone through in life or how I was raised or just I just never felt comfortable enough to just be soft I always felt like I needed to overachieve or just achieve the most in what I was doing like my accomplishments and what I got done or a big part of who I am, my personality, my, you know, yeah, a big part of who I am, my personality, and what I have to offer. And so, <laughs> when making that, being in a relationship, it was more so like, being in a, uh, how do I explain this? It was like, I was at a point where I was starting to self-reflect and and I, I'm going to really break this down. I was starting to self-reflect and realizing that this super overachieving, even super hyper independent thing was a protection for myself. I still believe that you should be independent as women, as people. And I'm trust me, <laughs> I was proven right. But I just I didn't want to be hyper that way. And. With the partnership that I was in, I would discuss the things that I wanted. Like, hey, if I'm ever to have another kid, I know for me, I want to be in a position where I can take off work. Like, I already have, I already have a daughter, so I kind of know exactly what I want if I'm to travel down that path again. I've never felt comfortable with asking for certain things because I was so hyper independent because I don't trust people to lead me. I don't trust people to hold up their end. I rather, I rather just, you have your things. I love or I mess with you because you are who you are instead of kind of expecting certain things from you because I think I'm starting to realize that I am a person. I don't know if I become resentful I and mean, maybe I do, but I definitely, I definitely put Okay, and depending on who you would ask, because like if I ask my mom, this is it, what I ask for is not a lot. If I ask, talk to my friend group and people who have standards and work on themselves, this is not a lot. But sometimes it seems like I can put heavy expectations and things on people because that is what was placed on me. And I also put very heavy, heavy expectations on myself. 
So, oh, let me back up. So what I was saying was I knew what I wanted. So I knew what I wanted in terms of, hey, if I have another child, I know that if I want to take off six months a year, whatever, if I want to not work during that, because although it might be normalized, I've never done things normal. You're not going to push me into the strong black woman trope. Am I a strong person? Absolutely. But no, it's not. Mm -mm. I don't I don't believe in struggling and, and, and just pushing through for the sake of being able to say I'm such a strong person. Look at what I did. Look at how much I had to endure. Look at how much stress and, and pain I had to endure just to, sh to show that I'm strong. I'm good. I'm strong. Trust me, I'm strong, not not based on my trauma and every and how much pain I had to inflict, per se. So I'm like, OK, if I have a baby and I want to take off, I can I want to farm. I want to like take care of animals. If I want to like, what else did I say? Uh, having a partner, which at that time I did have this, a partner who is not forcing me to cook. I just so happen to like to cook, but I had somebody that was like, had to tell me, like they literally had to, had to tell me even when I was tired and I would cook and stuff like that. And again, it wasn't really a gender role thing. Now, mind you, I, I dated women before this, so it wasn't really a gender role thing. It was just, I really was trying to do this particular relationship differently than I had done before because what was expected out of this relationship was differently. And you have to do things differently to not keep getting the same results that you were getting before. So I'm like, okay, let me try something different. I didn't move this way and move this way. Let me try. But it will come times where they would have to tell me, like, you don't have to cook. I'm I'm grown. I can cook something for myself or I can buy something or we can buy food. You don't always have to cook. I don't have to. My value wasn't coming from cleaning, cooking, doing the, the one womanly duties. Like they're appreciated, but they're not like these. These are not the reasons why I love you or find you valuable. So I was like, OK, so soft life can be provided by a partner. OK, so that's my thinking. So I was really addressing more of the toxic side of the boss babe, boss babe, boss babe. But as I'm going to tell this story, I'm you have I'm really I was realizing like how toxic was it though? Like and was it really toxic? Like I again, I think there is a toxic side to it where you're kind of overachieving, doing things, doing things. And if you were to stress yourself out and you don't allow for help and you just and you kind of are doing it out of fear of letting people in and it's a it's a protection mechanism like all that stuff then yeah you might really really need to unpack that because to me at that point you don't have a you're not even providing yourself a soft life hyper independence doesn't equal a soft life right and so i think what i have seen is you can only have it one or two ways and it's pretty extreme it's like the soft life of the of the boss women giving themselves the soft life typically consists of for real. Like let's be for real, it's this going, 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 hustle, 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 hustle. And yeah, you can pay your bills and you can give yourself things, but still behind the scenes and stuff, it's not a soft life. You still might be stressed out. You're still not necessarily taking care of yourself in other ways. It en ends up being just accomplishments or you you being a man and a woman in a relationship with yourself kind of thing so it's usually an extreme or if that's not what it is then you just re relinquish all independence you just re like yeah you just relinquish all independence and you like I'm not gonna do anything I'm just gonna sit and I'm gonna be a dainty little flower and you're gonna pay for everything and that's the soft life I don't have to do anything that's my pre rant okay Let's look up what is soft life. I see two definitions here. I see one that says soft life refers to a lifestyle of comfort and relaxation with minimal challenges. And I guess I'm going to go with that because that's <laughs> that, it's in the dictionary now. You know, I love me a good definition so people don't get confused. I see one that says to reject hustle culture and to live a life without struggle and stress. But via, via dictionary.com, okay? Soft life is a lifestyle of comfort and relaxation with minimal challenges or stress. Okay. I actually want to read the next part too. 
Some people use the term in reference to a life that involves and is a product of wealth and luxury, while others interpret it as simply being a simplified life unburdened from stress and responsibilities. So yeah, I think there's a mix up in soft life, meaning, oh, you just get luxury treatment and things like that. And you have somebody giving you luxury, or if you were to give the soft life to yourself, which I'll also get into, then that means that you have a soft life because you're wealthy and you have luxuries. And I could not disagree more because I think with soft life comes peace and ease and not a lot of struggle and things like that as well. And I mean that on every level. So if you are getting treated to a soft life, again, I'm, I'm going more towards partnership. If you're getting treated to a soft life, but you're always stressed out, meaning, meaning, monetary like money wise but you're stressed out or you're not emotional like all that stuff i don't believe that you're living a soft life now all right because we get we're about to get into the meat of things because this story is not like a one moment in time like okay i'm telling the story like my, some of my story times that has a beginning middle end like it's just one moment in time it is not gonna include the whole range of just the whole relationship because I have other stories within a relationship. This video is more of me making the decision to participate in soft life via a man or via partnership and how it went for me and things like that. So I'm gonna break it down for y'all. So let's talk about my history with independence. Imagine me, single mom, but like not really single. I guess single moms are like when you're not with the father, I don't know. Don't mean to be telling my own business, but imagine me. So, my history just with independence in general and the whole, I don't really know if it was a soft life thing, but I can kind of say my, where my mentality would be. But with independence is, I had a mother who was a boss, okay? She was a boss. Like, whatever y'all think a boss is, today, she was that. And she was definitely in her 20s. So... I never saw, glory be to God, I never saw a toxic version of that though. So my independence came from my mother being a strong woman and she was feminine. She wasn't a tomboy with this and like she was very, 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 very feminine. And she had so, to me, she had so much grace. And I've always been sur surrounded by very strong women and for the most part, feminine women. So what I would see, I saw that strength. I saw that getting it done. I saw that independence. I had very, very great male figures in my life. I never witnessed my mom trying to get the soft life out of a man or waiting for a man in order to do something. My mom, hair was always done. Nails was always done. Vacations, I got it. We going on vacation. I went on vacation a lot through my years. And so I'm going to travel because of her. So the independence, oh, I really hope y'all cannot hear what's going on outside. It's so distracting. Uh, what was I saying? Uh, so how I was raised, one, she showed me. And two, I never really saw or was talked to about gender roles. Like, it wasn't really like men are supposed to do, to do this. Men was not. Honestly, like I said, they were great men. But... I just, honestly, the way that my mom used to carry herself, if a man wasn't there, it would not, to me, it would not have made a difference. Like, the the man or my stepfather, one the one that raised me, which I was around a, a, a very long time, like, there was nothing to me that I saw that I felt, again, great people, that I saw where it was like, if they were removed, that our quality of life would have declined. Like, it was none of that. My mom taught me, like, hey, always have your own. And again, it wasn't in a toxic way. It wasn't like men are not ish. Uh, you can't trust men, Bob. It was not any of that. It was literally, no, you want to make sure that you take care of you always. You want to make sure that you're straight always because you never know what can happen like it was deeper than just one one I did it my mom didn't didn't center men I didn't feel like she did and for for me she didn't center men for me it wasn't to this day it's not about 
who you're with, what you can gain from who you're with. Are you getting married? She never pressured me to have kids. None of that weird, like none of that stuff. I'm going to call it weird. I think it's kind of weird. It was never that. It was always, hey, when it's time for you to get a place, no matter who you live with, man or not, you want to make sure that whatever you are putting your name on, whatever you are signing up for, you can cover the whole thing because it happens, okay? It does. It happens. And you can take that however you want, whether you break up or, God forbid, they pass. Whatever the case may be, you want to make sure you're straight. You want to make sure you are straight. My mom was a very logical person. She was a very logical woman. The things that he wish we would have took more heed to when we were children. So, I've always had that about me. It was always, I'm going to get it done. I don't need you attitude and no shade to you but who's gonna do for me better than I can do for myself who's gonna give to me better than I can give to myself and a lot of times it just ended up going that way in my relationships where it's like I have things I want to accomplish I have things I want to do I have a purpose like I don't need you so I am one of those women that will be like I don't need you because I don't and there's nothing wrong with that. I've seen this, this whole, when women are like, I don't need you, I want you. Somehow, that's a bad thing. How? How is that a bad thing? Because if you're not operating that way, but then you're like, I want a man to provide everything, then you're a user or a gold digger or whatever the case may be. It's like you can't win in that aspect. So we're here talking about ourselves. And how to give things to ourselves. Because if we listen in to the other side, you can't win. Okay, there's, you can only win if you're doing exactly what they deem okay for you to do. So yeah, my mom always taught me that. Like, my value was never in my looks. Of course, I've always felt confident. But I think because I was so confident in my abilities, I always did think like, I can do whatever I want. I can accomplish anything. That was instilled by my mom. And again, no shade to other people. But I'm going to get it done. It's like, it's almost like you can be here or you cannot be here. It has no bearing on me, sweetheart. Okay? And that's li that was literally with men and women. Like, it doesn't matter to me because I made sure I was straight before you even got here. Before, before you decided or we decided we was doing whatever, I made sure I was straight because I'd be damned if my quality of life decreases because of another human being. So she's always taught me that. Just make sure you're good. That's your responsibility. Okay? That's how she that's how she let let me out in the world. She's like I know how to cook, but it wasn't because of a man or to get a partner. It wasn't like you know, you need to know how to cook. You need to know how to clean. You have to do this, this, and that to, to find a partner. It was, no, you need to know how to cook because you should know how to feed yourself. You need to know how to clean because you need to know how to clean. Like, it, it was just like, these are basic things. Like, these are not gender things. Or th It was never put for a man. I've never, we've never, there's never, like, I'm to, and... Chef kisses to my mom, okay? Chef kisses to my mom because she never centered my value around men or why. There's never been a, you should do this for the gaze of men. You should do this to keep a man or to keep a partner. Really, I would guess she was probably thinking men, but period. Like that is not, no. Your value is not in serving somebody in that way. You know what I'm saying? We It was always you. Focus on you. Make sure you can better yourself. Make sure what can you do to, to be a better person. And she just showed that by example. It was maybe more so preparing me as far as what you would need to do to be a parent, which she also never actually, you know, we never actually had those conversations. We have them now because I, I have a child. And I'd be like, wait, listen, how'd you do it? Help. Um, but <laughs> But she's never done that. And so... I just, I learned how to cook because she was always cooking, but she wasn't like get in the kitchen, figure out, no, my mom cooked me breakfast all the way through high school. And I think when I went to college a little bit, when I was staying with her, 
in the beginning, I think she still would make sure too, because she's like, you need to make sure you're nourished, blah, blah, blah. Go get your education. Food is not something you need to be worried about. You know what I'm saying? It was just not a big emphasis on those kind of things. Um, I just saw by example, she just did it and maybe I'd go and be a sous chef for her. And then, you know, you had the basic chores, like make the bed, clean your room, clean up after yourself, just things like that. My value always came from my intellect. My value came from, um, yeah, my smarts and things like that. Naturally in partnering, I just probably fell into 50-50 because one, well, I'm not going to take care, so, solely take care of another grown person. That's not like if if I could, maybe my mom, my mom's not even that kind of mom. Like she wouldn't even let my mom. So it just I'm not taking care of a, a, another fully functioning grown human being 100 percent. Like I'm not doing that. And if we're not like you didn't feel ill or something like, you know, what I'm saying that's not my responsibility. And so I don't make that somebody else's responsibility either. So I naturally kind of fall into the 50 50 thing because I also used to watch sidebar. I used to watch a lot of snapped in crime shows and stuff i feel like i mentioned this before and i think ulterior motives because i used it used to be the life insurance ones where people used to off their spouse because of a life insurance policy or anything money wise okay so to me you gotta have some stuff going on we both gotta have stuff going on i need to know that you don't need me it's not even a, i don't need you i don't i don't have the mindset of with i'm not of the mindset in the group of women that that also are like i'm the prize i'm the prize i'm the prize i don't need you i don't need you but you need me because i'm a woman no value comes from the individual who you are as an individual regardless of your gender so now we're gonna get into how this manifested in relationships and then i'm gonna tell you when i started the soft life in a relationship and how we just damn near went to hell in a hand basket that was already on fire okay so in my relationships i always remain independent always 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 remained independent high school sweetheart if you want to know anything about them you can watch the domestic violence story time the three proposal story time, you know, to kind of get a feel of who I'm talking about. They, I think, were attracted to my independence, to my not needing them, to my not falling all over them because when I met them in high school, they were like a, a jock, one of the popular jocks. And I just, I was just there. I was like, I don't even want to be here. <laughs> so, you know, but going there, I was like, just one of the cute girls. I went to a predominantly like white, in other schools so that's just kind of how that turned out and i think for me getting me was a challenge and when we actually ended up in a relationship and stuff like i said i have expectations i feel like once it got real and it was like oh like you're serious about your life like you're or you're serious about yourself like people <laughs> people will meet me and stuff and, and i think that they know this i think that there's a certain vibe i give off or i know it i just know what it is that necessarily you can't play with me but then i might open up and be a little vulnerable and you think that you can and then when you realize i like, hold on like this girl she don't play about herself you know what i'm saying they start using a lot of other crazy tactics and stuff just gets it gets out of hand so i think once that relationship started to progress and they realized like okay this girl is for herself like she's like you know, she has expectations that's deeper than just she don't want to be somebody, just be somebody baby mom. That is, it is a person I end up having my one and only kid with. I lost my virginity to and everything. But it's like, just because I did that and maybe you're turning out to be something that I don't want, I'm not going to stick around. You're not going to trap me with a kid or nothing. So it's like, no, I have expectations. And if you're not willing to meet me there, because I know where I'm going, I know what I want, I know what I'm what I'm capable of giving, I know who I want to be, all that stuff, then I'm not going to deal with it. And so I think because they weren't in a place, I'm not going to say they couldn't do it, they weren't going to do it, I'm not going to drag them and make it, you know, again, I'm not in the business and just saying it's the good person, it's the bad person, I'm going to leave it what it is, but they were not capable or willing to do what it took 
to meet those expectations, which is fine. However, I don't have to accept. And so what would happen is they would start to try to take my independence from me. This is a relationship of just textbook like abuse, like don't want you around your friends don't don't want you to have a good relationship with your family stuff like that if i would have was to go out it's a whole nother story i would go out with my friend because i'm not even a person that has a whole bunch of friends i'm very particular about who i have around me because i'm like i said I'm, i've been like this i've been focused i know myself i need to be focused purpose driven so the one friend i have oh god forbid i'm out i'm just out being a hoe and this friend is a lot like me so we be chilling like we we didn't even go to clubs. We didn't go to clubs. We didn't go to uh, bars. We didn't. If, if there was a bar inside the restaurant, we used to just get hotels and chill. Like, go to work, chill. Get hotels, chill. Maybe do a little traveling or something, chill. Like, we were not, we're not on that. Whatever. Neither here nor there. So, it was isolating you from your friends and family. But I didn't let it happen. And I started a lot of arguments because you're not about to tell me who I can and cannot be friends with if if they're not causing a problem and wreaking havoc on my life. If my health and quality of life was declining because of this person, different. And you still cannot force me not to be friends with somebody. You can say how you feel. If it's a deal breaker for you, you don't have to be with me, period. You just don't have to be with me. So it would start there and them take trying to take my independence like, when they met me, I was in school. Like, again, they're my high school. They were my high school sweethearts. So they knew me before. But when we got back together after high school, because we broke up or whatever, after we got back together, I'm unsure if I had my daughter by that time. Regardless, though, time had passed. And although our relationship was like tumultuous and stuff like that, I still was like, I'm going back to school. Like, I will fall off in terms of things th life happens things crumble stuff falls apart and stuff but i have to get back on track i have to have purpose so i'm like okay well i'm going back to school and i remember it was him saying for what i didn't enter the wrong thing excuse me what do you what do you what do you mean for what one, because I want to. Two, because I want to. Three, because I. It's like because I want to. And don't act like I wasn't on that trajectory. Like, whatever. So, having independence was not a thing that they wanted. Dating people in between, if they ever try to take my independence, if they ever try to minimize me and stuff, I was just usually out of there. So we didn't even make it out of the talking phase. Now. Next um, big relationship, if you don't know about that one, that was my that was my video about my 10-year relationship or whatever. And that, again, help my independence. If you start trying to take my independence away from me, we're going to butt heads. And especially the age I was in up until now, I'm going to be honest with you. When I feel constricted, when I feel like you're trying to take my independence and my freedom, and not from like oh, you're talking to exes or cut this off. Not that, but I mean like when you're impeding on my purpose, when you're impeding on my independence and stuff like that, it get it gets, it got ugly. It got ugly because I, I don't like that. So in that relationship, I would say they were more like, they supported me when I did accomplish great things or whatever. However, I also, I feel like in hindsight, Maybe the, with the start of that relationship, it wasn't that bad. You really have to watch that story because I don't feel like going over a bunch of stuff. Um, but with that particular relationship, it was more like people liked me on, on every level. Either they wanted to be cool with me, be friends with me, they wanted to date me. And they were very threatened. <clears throat> In this relationship, this person was insecure. Before I gave them a reason to be, I'm not going to sit here and act like there were not some things that are like, okay, that probably would make anybody insecure, you know, but before that, it was just a simple, oh, you cool with somebody that likes you. The crazy thing was she was popular too. She, she had it. Like she was him, her, she was, a, she was him, her. So she knew how to, how his life. <laughs> so she knew how it went to get attention. She knew how it felt to have a bunch of people like you 
Now, I don't know if it's because they had a track record of being a, a hoe, excuse my language, and they were so extroverted and flirt. maybe it's because of what how they handle a plethora of people liking them. So they put that on me because just because you like me don't mean nothing to me. If you overstep a boundary, I'm uncomfortable. It's disrespectful in any way. You're out of there. I'm still like that. I don't care. It doesn't bother me. So it's like that was a, more of an insecure thing where I felt kind of smothered or where I couldn't be independent without them feeling some type of way. And that's a lot trying to make a person secure and they're insecure, especially over things like that, where it's not like, okay, I cheated on you and now I'm trying to gain your trust back. Or, okay, I, I'm not attracted to you, called you fat, this, this, and that, and I'm trying to make you secure again or whatever. It was literally just me being other people like me and stuff. And so I think the leash was kind of, <laughs> the leash, this is crazy. I feel like the leash was kind of like, longer like they were proud of me and stuff but as time went on it was like if they weren't a part of the success if, if somebody else was a part of it if I was thanking somebody else if god forbid if somebody else saw something in me it was like oh it's, oh, it's because they want to sleep with you oh it's because of this this and that the crazy thing is why is it that you think you're the only person that can see a certain thing in me when it comes to greatness or being great at something or whatever like why do you think you're the only person like you're attracted to these qualities for a reason there's going to be other people that are attracted to it and it could it could be literally it wasn't even always a relationship like it wasn't always like oh i'm talking to this person it could just be a friend or something and i'd be like you inspire me love you this is and that you're great all this stuff and they just if they were not a part of the process of me being happy, successful, or whatever, then it just it just wasn't going to work. So that's that relationship when it comes to independence. So it was more of an insecure. Now, okay, so after that relationship, because that was the relationship before my last relationship. So my last relationship, I'm entering it. And disclaimer here, I went from female to male or or woman to man not transition but i was dating a woman then i started dating a man and i started to rethink what i wanted the relationship before this last one i was like i'm not birthing another kid because i'm with a woman i've already had one if you would like a child with me you're gonna have to carry it they didn't really i don't know i don't think they really wanted to to do that per se and then I also had some spiritual ailments with that like I, because I literally could have been with them without ever having a kid but they really wanted a kid this is something we definitely talked about but it literally was sure we can have one but I'm not gonna be the one bearing the child because I'm not completely sure of how that process works if we would be able to use each other's stuff it's unnatural I don't care. I was struggling. When I'm struggling with a decision spiritually, I'm not going to make the decision. I'm not. I'm, I'd rather be safe than sorry. So the whole having a baby with the woman thing, using my body for it, I just, I wasn't sure. So I get into the, this new relationship and <laughs> I'm trying to debate if I want to tell you what videos you can watch to even learn about this person. You got the why you stop drinking video. You got the spinning the block video or relapse video. Those will kind of give you a good gist of this particular person if you want to do that. So with the new relationship, I'm like, you know what? Maybe I'm just scared. Maybe it is okay to trust. Maybe it is okay to be open. Okay. I know that if I'm to, to just date men, let me give this a fair shot because men I don't understand them per se like I cannot get with the whole like men are just stupid men are just this and they're so different that it just it's so mind-boggling to me it's so confusing but I'm like okay like God if this is what it's made to be you feel me God if this is what it's, it's made to be men are supposed to be women blah 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 let me see so I get into this new situation and um <laughs> respectfully not a, not a great situation to be in but the thinking just the thinking just came from let me try something different let me stop 
trying the same thing as far as like me like I and then I have been doing therapy doing healing working on stuff my attachment style seeing how I view relationships how I view men is there a reason why I am hyper independent and or am I hyper independent is it healthy is the way I'm functioning in relationships healthy and and things like that so I'm okay I'm gonna try something totally different and also I was going back and forth with the kid thing, I'm like, okay, do I not want to have more children because I don't want to be attached to another person? The kind of arrangement I have with my current um, child's father is not a thing. Like, I don't have baby daddy drama or nothing like that. Like, life is good. <laughs> okay, life is sweet. And there's no weird stuff. There's no malicious thing. It's not no, oh, they, I mean... It wouldn't be malicious to have them paying child support, but it's nothing like that. It's not, no, we in the courts always fighting or we arguing and this, this, and that and blah. Like, it's none of that weird stuff. It just, it just is what it is. So, I'm peaceful on that side. I don't have, like, baby daddy drama or nothing like that. So, I'm like, okay, let me try this differently. Let me discover was I dating women because of issue I had with my father was I dating women because I was actually scared of men was I dating men dating women because I didn't trust men so I'm like really you know I'm really like trying to figure it out not and again not that I'm not judging obviously because I was in a relationship with one I'm not saying that that is the case for women who date women I think there's a plethora of reasons why we do certain things but for me I'm just very like why 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 so I'm like, okay, go into this relationship. And I've been told that I'm aggressive before, not necessarily like in like a New York chick way aggressive. Like, what's up, B? Give me your number, yo. Like, like what's good, son? Like, not like that. Like, I'm not like that or I'm not like, oh, I'm one of the dudes. I'm not like punch you in the arm and like acting like masculine. I'm not that. I'll say that. I'm not masculine. I'm, I'm like this all the time. Um, my aggression... <laughs> My aggression comes from my, my, how I feel when I get disrespected, things like that. And in my physicality, like, but it's because I move fast. Like, getting into this new relationship, I just kept getting told I was aggressive. Like, you're aggressive, you're aggressive, you're aggressive. And, and again, I really want you to go watch the stories I said about this person, which was why I stopped drinking, relapse video. And I think I've ended up making other story times. But based off of things I went through with them, but those are like, if you want to get a feel of this, how this person is, because now I think of things with them so differently. But the big thing with a, the big, big thing was you're aggressive, you're aggressive, you're aggressive, which I have been told before, but I didn't care. Like my ex before that, I don't care. I don't care about you saying that I'm aggressive because to me, instead of it being like I'm aggressive, I feel like you're trying to minimize stuff because I feel like that will come up when when you have done something stupid or you done what whatever the case may be i feel like i'm extremely assertive but in this in the new relationship it was like you're aggressive you're aggressive even with my movements when i would do stuff it was such a big thing it was like oh it was such a big thing and since i'm used to that i'm used to presenting strong even coming off strong i'm used to like my movement i'm clumsy i might make a mistake and rip something because I because I move too fast I guess you can call that aggression it's not on purpose it's not like I'm angry it's not like that so that was something that really just used to kind of nag at me like you're aggressive you're aggressive you're aggressive and so I really took that personally it started to affect the way I handled things so because I didn't want to come off aggressive and I was always kind of not insecure but kind of just it was always there like am I being aggressive am I being aggressive I probably wasn't as assertive as I needed to be or I would feel like when I was assertive it was being called aggressive to kind of deflect minimize how I felt because it's like well you're being aggressive when it'd be something like no this upset me and it's very valid or when I used to bring stuff it'll be like oh you have an attitude whether true or not I'm not being disrespectful or anything so let's get past the fact that I have an attitude and let's address the bullshit or whatever it is that you did that is like whatever let's address that like get over it get over the the whole you have an attitude thing like I'm not trying to hear that I'm not disrespecting you I'm not violating you I'm not doing none of that other stuff let's stay on topic so I felt like 
that a lot of times was used to make me feel like you're too aggressive, almost like you're not being feminine. Like you're aggressive, you're aggressive, you're aggressive. When it was like relationship changing, relationship threatening behavior, why are you worried about you talking to me about being aggressive? Now we're harping on the fact that I was being aggressive or you're harping on the fact that I had an attitude to deflect on what's going on. And then, so since I felt like I had to be kind of, I was kind of like, it would feel like I was walking on eggshells. Like I knew I was right or I knew how I was, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, I have an attitude, but you, you're on trash. Like you're on BS. How do you expect me to handle this situation when it's a clear violation or something like that? And so somewhere in... Just me still going to therapy, all this stuff. I saw like the soft life thing. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Now, mind you, I have given myself the soft life. Like between the relationships or whatever, when I was single, I, I do that for myself. That's what I do for myself. That's why being single for me is absolutely fine. Post breakup is, whew. but then after like, I, I realized later that that is something that I give myself. And then I set those expectations on my partner unknowingly kind of and it end up kind of getting upset when they can't provide that for me because my quality of life starts to decline like why would I want to be with you and my quality of life is declining and then I was listening to words and not actions like it was oh man y'all it was so up and down because it was it was unhealthy I don't I'm gonna think toxic I guess we call it toxic I don't know but it was so like yeah, but this warrants, to me, this warrants a little bit of attitude or we can just be done. You know, when you're not ready to be done, you're just not ready to be done. So that's how that kind of started. So it was like, okay, they're trying to make me more, more like, like, because I want to say calm, but even when I was like, it just ended up being, I had, I feel like I had to suppress that so much so that I wouldn't be called aggressive when it's really me being assertive, standing up for myself, demanding things for myself, taking care of myself, that I would blow up. And the only time I've ever like really, really done that was when I was experiencing PTSD after my um, DV relationship. And it was just because I like was like heavily triggered off the PTSD. But in relationship wise, the relationship before that, all that stuff, it was not just, oh, you're just lashing out. Oh, you're lashing out. You don't know how to, you just can't control your emotions. So I knew that for me, this was relationship specific because like I'm constantly having to feel like I have to push stuff down or every time I'm talking about how I feel or something that's an issue or me demanding respect on something or me holding you accountable, it's you have an attitude. Oh, you have an attitude. Oh, you're being aggressive. Oh, you're being aggressive. And so then it would come a point where certain points would be like, I'm sick of this shit. Like I didn't suppress this so much. Now I'm lashing out. So I'm gonna be honest in in that. And that that was that ended up being my reaction because I had to keep like like doing that. And then also it was elements of like verbal abuse and stuff like that where they would start something, be disrespectful, and I would like blow up or whatever because you're not about to be disrespecting me. That's that's crazy that you think that that's what we're about to be doing. So that's kind of how relationship, you know, going into that as far as the soft life thing, I feel like that was kind of what led me into, okay, maybe I need to do this. I mean, if, I, if I'm if i not so aggressive, if I don't have an attitude, I can get, you know, the things that I have been giving myself, the soft life, like I can get this from this person. The reason why I'm not really getting that soft life treatment or whatever from, from my partner is because of that behavior. No, no, that's not why. And that is why I say soft life is also about feeling safe in partnership. Because how do you live a soft life? How are you at peace and ease and stuff like that if you're suffering from emotional abuse or physical, all that stuff, any of that stuff, emotional abuse, or if you're not, if you're always stressed out, if it's not even that far, if you're always stressed out, if the relationship maybe is not healthy or whatever the case may be, like how are you, how are you even tr to trust somebody? You like you have to be able to trust to get that comfortable around someone period there has to be a level of trust i had shared some of my difficulties and you know because i'm very very open with people because who's for you is for you and who's not is not and now i learned it's a whole different thing too is you don't have to give everything like you don't have to dump everything and everybody everybody doesn't need to know every single one of your traumas like y'all get these videos because 
these are things that I've experienced, I've gone through, I've gotten through, and you're never going to be able to necessarily go based off of who I am based on these videos because I'm telling you things I've already gotten I've already experienced and gotten through so I'm not worried about it but you don't have to tell a person all of your traumas and all that stuff period I feel like you should tell them over time you know depending on what you're comfortable comfortable with but really what they need to know I think that in intimate partnerships sometimes we overshare too soon or period share the things that are going to impact them like if my attachment style and me having like nightmares from ptsd or this happened this happened is also going to affect you then yeah i'm going to have the conversation with you but me telling you about something that i probably got through or, or something i'm dealing with that i need to talk to my therapist about is not necessary for me to tell you and so i will say that that's probably something i not probably is something i have had to work on like the, just because they're your person, like, or at the time of your dating a person, like, they don't have to know every single traumatic thing or just every single thing, yeah, that you, that you're going through or been through. They don't, they don't, they don't. I don't know, maybe, and I feel like y'all, somebody needs to hear this, because they don't, they don't need to, especially, again, if it's not affecting them, if it's something that you have to journey with on your own to get therapy and stuff like that, fine. We need to tell them a part of a part of something so they can support you fine or because it will affect them or it, it does affect them or whatever fine but you don't not everything like I don't need to tell you every I'm sorry not everything so in this relationship there was manipulation and emotional abuse and verbal abuse abandonment on and off on and off every literally like every other month on and off on and off to the point where it was like that thing where people you know people try to figure out why you can't get out of like toxic relationships it's like that high that low that high that low that high that low because I was to be ma made to believe if we're not going off of actions okay and, and sometimes actions would show like they would kind of line up but if we're talking about consistency and patterns <laughs> I should have known better <laughs> it should have known better should have known better okay so i was made to believe i was made to believe maybe by small actions but mostly a lot of words like that i could be vulnerable i could be open i could because something might happen and they'd be like i'm sorry blah blah, blah. you can be open so i was been made to believe by the other person not just solely by actions not by patterns not by my my spirit not by my better intuition or common sense but by the person that i could be vulnerable and open and that my aggression was so demonized that pretty much it was made to for me to feel like that part of myself was so like disgusting instead of maybe trying to figure out why i'm this way or why me behaving this way which is was not malicious in nature affects you so much it was more emphasis on you have this issue. You you always have an attitude. And you're always aggressive and all this stuff because pretty much you need to. You have to trust me. You need to learn how to trust me. Be be vulnerable and all this stuff. So <clears throat> that's what I did because it was times where I knew my attitude was warranted. Where I, I try not to. It's not like a thing like oh I got an attitude. It's okay to have. But there were times where a certain amount of assertiveness, a certain amount of attitude was warranted. However, I was just like. Trying to completely remove that that part of me, probably in hopes that I was gonna get what I wanted, which is that whole soft life thing, to where I could chill. And I also started to kind of demonize myself and that independent part of myself, like you know, start believing lies. And not even lie, not even lies, because I don't, I honestly don't care about the whole rhetoric of you're gonna be alone forever. Like, trust me. Other than dealing with some of the stuff that I see in the people, I, I don't care. Just give me a good community. I'm fine. And also, I, period. We got God. I don't, I just, that doesn't, that doesn't affect me. But I was like, okay, you know, getting caught up in that whole, okay, maybe I need that. Maybe, maybe I do need a man. Maybe I am too independent. Maybe, you know, and the way to do that is to relinquish some control, relinquish some some power but i don't think you should have to relinquish control and power over yourself and that's what i did i was relinquishing power and control i'm such an intuitive person 
And I, I can say that not arrogantly. I can say that because that is just one of the things that I focus on heavily and trust in myself and, and, and trust in my instincts and things like that. And it was like, I started to just question myself a lot, a lot, because it was almost like in order for me to get that, I need to do this. Because it literally, and it felt like, it's like, what do they say? Like dangling a carrot in front of you. Like, it's like, it's like right there dangling in front of you. And so it's this self-talk of, okay, if only if I wasn't so aggressive, okay, only if, only if I didn't have an attitude, only if I, I would let you help, only if I wasn't so independent and this, this and that. So it started to become that internally with me, caused a lot of anxiety, all that stuff, right? So then <laughs> this is where it starts to go a little, this is where it gets, um, I don't want to, I don't know if I can say manipulative, but this is where it gets backfiry. Okay. So I start to relinquish that control a little bit, you know, just like, okay, in this area. And, and I don't know why I trusted this person so much, contrary to actions. And I don't know what the hell was going on. I can dig into that deeper and I could probably come back and tell you like, oh, I was just like, I thought I was just better. I, I thought I could change them or something. something. Something stupid probably. But I finally relinquished some of that autonomy, some of that independence, some of that control. I struggled. I struggled with that very badly. Very, very badly. I was very expressive, but I was always anxious. And I do naturally have some anxiety, but it was so much higher. Like, I started to get anxious. I started to worry. Because I think what happened was I didn't just gradually do it. Like, or I probably gave up control and things in areas that I should not have. I started to have that expectation of, okay, well, if you stack a little soft life and I don't need to be aggressive, I don't need to have an attitude, you can pay for things, take care of everything, all this stuff. Good sis don't got a ring on her finger, not saying that that. You know, that necessarily changed any things, but it makes the odds better. Good sis is not, <laughs> I'm not taking into account. Does he have the material? Does he even have the material to provide you with what you've been providing yourself? Like, let's, let's be realistic for once. Because even if he wants to give it to you, doesn't mean he's capable. Just because he wants to give it to you doesn't mean he has, he has the material. Like, you, you, you could very well want to do that. That's like, that's like me because I want because my heart and really my heart and spirit desires I think my my grandma deserves a house and so because of that desire I expect her to just move out her house and she ends up homeless no it's the same thing like okay you desire to give me these things you desire to want to make this money and give it to me and and say that you want to make so much money and you just want to give it to me you want me to manage it you desire to to, to for it to be where I can have self care days and you foot in the bill and I can just go on the spot or you 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 desire or you want for me to be able to wake up I'll be like babe I'm gonna go on a trip and you can just do that or give it to like whatever but the material is not that you don't have the materials and what happens is me I should have been more aware of the fact that you don't have the material so don't give control where they can't control they can't lead in that area there's nothing they can't do nothing, not at least not yet so i prematurely gave it up and went with all this all the words and stuff like that and then yeah i became kind of resentful because i'm like bro i don't know when i started to lean back too much but i started to lean back and i'm like bro you're not doing what you're supposed to do you're not doing what you're supposed to do but instead of having a real conversation and just being like, I know that this is what you want to give me. Just don't say it to me. I get it. Plan for it. And once you get it done, then things will change gradually. But you can't, it's like, don't get mad at me for doing certain things, behaving a certain way, moving a certain way, because I want to give myself a, a, a specific life that you cannot give me. It doesn't make you a bad person for that. It's just, you're asking somebody to trust you in an area where you're not trustworthy because you don't have the materials yet, I guess. With that, 
came in the resentment, came in the, you know, and then pressure. A lot of pressure enters enters there because we was probably both being a little delulu or something because that's kind of what it was because to me, I'm like, okay, bet. You got it. Because, again, I wasn't looking at the material, but I was also just like, okay, you say, and because and, I go off of people's, it's it's a mind a mind just to me it's like okay i would ask for a plan to certain things okay i do want to do this and i do want to really push that and i do want to be able to do this this and that and all that stuff but i used to ask for plans and it was like sometimes there was a plan but sometimes the plan still didn't seem realistic or within a time frame realistic and i'm all about big dreams big goals so i'm not saying that but it's like the further and i start to dig into it and it was almost like just trust me and it's like okay like you got all these big goals and dreams and it's like just trust me but it's like one we done broke up every month it's not that stable so in the back of my mind i'm like that's probably not a good idea but i'm trying to start anew i'm like okay trust you or whatever so i end up again relinquishing too much control too leaning it too much into somebody whatever and got vulnerable something that i'm not afraid to do i've cried on this channel many a times i'm not afraid to cry i'm not afraid to be open and all that stuff but at the same time it's like a love hate thing like i have a a weird relationship like I'm vulnerable in the sense of being open, sharing what I've been through, feeling the feels, letting people see the feelings and stuff like that. Not so much now. I'm very particular and not even on purpose like, oh, I'm just not going to be vulnerable with you. I'm just very like you have to earn that from me with all of that and all that whole trust me, trust me, you don't trust me, blah, blah, blah. We're going to do this, 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 and that. All I need you to do because it was little stuff. It was like because I'm, I'm going to tell y'all why i ended up taking such a back seat and kind of just doing little things but really ended up how i ended up trying to support them you know i'll get into why but and so i start to get vulnerable so instead of necessarily lashing out and and things like that i start to really get vulnerable i cry I can't cry in front of everybody, but I start crying. I get vulnerable and things like that. I start sharing, like really sharing things as far as um, how I used to have PTSD nightmares. And they were happening. They happen a lot less now. But when I when I would have them, I actually stopped telling them about it because I, I used to feel so bad, like waking them up in the middle of the night or something like that, or I had a panic attack. Or something. I would tell them if it was going to affect them, if I was going to have a bad day or if it was really messing with my mood, I would share it. But then I stopped. And I was like, no, I need to go take care of this. And I just kind of transitioned over into doing it in, in, in therapy. I got vulnerable and it was used against me. <laughs> so I didn't I didn't relinquish some control. I'm not being hyper independent, not aggressive. Being the soft girly so I can experience the soft life via my man, my man, my man. Because again, my idea of a soft life is I should feel safe emotionally and all that stuff. If I'm going to still not trust, if I'm still going to not feel safe, I'm still, oh, then what are we doing? Why are we in a relationship? And I'm not going to be able to do the soft life girly thing. And I, I really wanted to still have my soft life in my relationship. Because like I said, I had, the, I had soft life outside of that, okay, with just myself. Like taking myself on dates, doing stuff with ease, making sure I have a self-care date, buying myself flowers. All the things, all the things, spa days, incense, body, just body scrubs, taking care, just doing everything. So I'm like, okay, I don't have to do, and I'm fine with doing those things for myself, but if I can get it double time or I don't have to do all of it by myself, why not? So I get vulnerable and it's used against me. And I remember this until, until this day, until this day, I wrote down the date put it in quotations and put the person's name because like I said, it wasn't a healthy relationship. It, over time, it just became, there were times where it seems like things 
where it's, I'm sorry, I wasn't looking at the camera. I'm because I took myself back to that place. And, oh my goodness. Ooh, where it seems as though it was getting better and stuff. And really, I think it was one of those relationships where because it lasted so long, it actually ended up being extremely damaging. However, my recovery it was initially was a hard thing. But like I said, I get over relationships pretty fast, but whatever. I remember vividly, I remember where I was at till this day. I remember them saying to me in response to me being, listen, non-aggressive, not an attitude. It was almost like, I want you to come to me in this soft and gentle way. But if it was any criticism in that, and, and I'm not, and not a hundred percent of the time, but if the criticism, it was almost like it required a certain amount of change, or if it wasn't, it was like, if it wasn't intentional and they realized maybe I hurt your feelings, for some reason, they did not like that at all versus if I have an attitude or if I'm aggressive or if I'm going through something, if I have, have an anxiety, if I'm not doing good, they were able to be much more calm. And that's a whole nother video because I think that was more so like when you have somebody that's dealing with stuff, because some people pick people that are always dealing with things because it makes it easier for them not to address their stuff. So if you with somebody that's now handling things right, you're stable, you're like trying to talk and stuff like that. I mean, you got to be productive and you got to focus on your own stuff. So the quote. So wait, I'm going to actually pull it up. Again, soft girly, something's happening. Oh, it's gonna get so much. Y'all gonna be like, girl, you needed to soft life not for you. Okay. Do <laughs> you you you're done? So something had happened. We had had a a situation or whatever. They brought up something that we had previously settled, like a, an issue or something that was bothering them or, or whatever that we had previously settled. And they brought it up. Our date was fine. Like we weren't having, there was nothing going on. And they were at work or whatever. And they just kind of aggressively, because I think we were on the phone. Were we on the phone? I think we might've been on the phone. And I had the car and I was just, I was in the area. Like I was doing stuff. And it just, this shit, it just ruined my whole, just, ugh. But they just made a very passive aggressive comment in front of, men because where they work a lot of men go there or whatever and it was just like being mean or like making a nasty comment being mean and they and they have a mean streak like being mean for no reason like out of nowhere because of whatever reason like this person is very double-minded they're very like i can't diagnose so i don't want to call them bipolar but they're very like they have a mean streak they have a a, a a way of just you'll be like why would you say like why would you say that so that happened and I was, I was hurt, but I was like breathing, breathing. When I got to them or whatever, I was just like, hey, like what was the point of that? And this, this, and that. After they were passing progress or whatever, I was calm. I was telling them how I felt. And of course it was like, oh, yo, he's got an issue. Oh, you have an attitude. Of course it was, it was, it was me. God forbid I don't like something, whatever. And it was made like that. And I was just like, no, I'm telling you that what you did was unnecessary. How you were talking to me was unnecessary. It getting brought back up. Is this something that you need to talk about again? Like, I'm like really trying to like, trying to get to the root of it before I address the fact that don't be passive aggressive with me. Don't start, don't start nothing with me for no reason. Don't ever sit and violate or disrespect me or whatever the case may be in front of people, like not in private too, but in front of people. Like, I don't, don't ever, cause I come around and what? People gonna think that it's okay. Like, it's okay. Like, oh yeah, you disrespect your girl. Like, I don't care. And they in the, it was in the music industry. It was a lot of things that I just should have, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not going for that. I don't care about how other people talk to their partner, but I'm not going for it. And I remember when I was expressing this, cause I'm, I was, I was sitting in the driver's seat. They was in the passenger side, they was still at, at work or whatever. And they told me to shut the F up. One, two, Freddie's coming for me. I'm like, 
don't don't talk to me like that like so this this is a specific phrase that I told them I didn't like which I ended up healing and just it the phrase doesn't make me as reactive as it used to in my DV situation they used to tell me to shut the the f up and I remember because again I'm very open very honest and that that is not the way your partner's supposed to talk to you anyway but the point of them saying that to me was like well you said how you felt and I was trying to talk and you were cutting me off and I'm like no I wasn't done talking and even if that's how you felt and I'm not saying that cutting you off would have been okay because that's one of your things you telling me to shut the f up that's like saying that's just people who call people out of their name and then try to make a reason for it no 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 and then try to make the other face part no just be like i feel like disrespecting you i just feel like you should shut the fuck up don't try to make it me no first of all i wasn't done talking and even if i was i mean even if i had interrupted you again i saying that it was it would have been right but don't talk to me like that so i kind of just after that we just we didn't talk and came back to talk to me or whatever came to the car and I was just like when stuff like that happens again very calm that makes me that kind of behavior the passive aggressive and plus to shut the f up because regardless of what you believe I don't want to wild out I'm tired like I'm not trying to lash out I'm not trying to like one because the alternative is leave like I'm gonna have to leave you because the alternative is to violate you. The, the alternative is we just get both. Everybody's gonna be sitting here being disrespectful. So I'm like, that makes me want to shut down or whatever. So I say that, and they dead look at me because 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 I said being passive aggressive with me, then me trying to calmly talk and you telling me to shut the fuck up makes me want to just shut down. It doesn't make me feel comfortable. I don't want to express myself and my emotions. It doesn't make me want to be vulnerable. So because I said that and they, all they probably heard was what they was doing wrong. I don't know. Because of that, they say May 30th. I'm not going to tell y'all the year, but May 30th, they tell me you're going to fall apart regardless. Even now in this moment. <clears throat> Because I forgot that they said that to me until I decided to do this video and, and story that I was like, wow. So your view of me went from she can get a little crazy because he was a little crazy and it could be toxic and she'll lash out or whatever. But your view of me went from, and I don't care, but your view went from crazy lash out to weak you're going to fall apart regardless meaning no matter what you do what you say you could be treating me top tier me as a human being as a person my makeup who I am you're gonna fall apart regardless do you know how that feels to hear that from your partner instead of your vulnerabilities and your softness and them being appreciative especially knowing the things that I have been through <laughs> the things that I have had oh the things that I have had to overcome the things that I made it through you're gonna fall apart regardless and I just stopped talking I was like dumbfounded like how I feel like I didn't I was like there are points in relationships I have and the good thing the best thing would be to just leave instead of getting so exhausted that I don't have a choice but Certain things cannot be unsaid. Well, nothing can be unsaid. <laughs> Just there's certain things, no matter 
how remorseful you may be. The only way for it to be forgiven or for it to be fixed is for it to be undone. And that was not something that could be unsaid. And right immediately after he did, he was like, I'm so sorry. How can I ever be vulnerable with you again? How can I ever cry in front of you? How can I, how, how? Like, because there's just certain things, even when you're mad. And I've said some crazy things when I am mad that maybe even if you didn't mean it in that specific specific way it was kind of indicating again how you felt like and i'd rather be crazy and this is a person that does have an alcohol thing and i just realized that this uh some things are just in their nature and it was sad to find out after it happened they kind of just kind of love bombed me a little bit right after and was like you know i want to go home and get on your nerves with a kiss overload like i want to make you so happy in life blah 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 and this is after <laughs> This is after them saying, you're going to fall apart regardless. Like, I quoted them and put it in quotes, put their name and put the date. Like, may you never forget that this, that you just said this to me. And they try to, they tried to gaslight it, talking about from happiness. You didn't let me finish, whatever. So I might not need to put it up, but it was pretty much that day. They was just, I want to make you so happy in life that I wish I met you in elementary school. I want you to feel protected, loved, confident. Like, I love you so much. Like, that was right after them saying that to me and I looked at them and they said that and they said like from happiness you didn't let me finish. And it was I think for a little bit of time after that I shut down for a little bit or just I would end up expressing myself and holding them accountable and they would make it about and I get I've seen so many posts and men like women who wake up in the morning and try to like have a conversation but sometimes I don't know maybe that's like I don't know the time it might be off but I would get called right right as soon as I said it. Not 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 yelling, not screaming, none of that. I would get called angry. Then it'd be called a thing and I might start crying. Then it's your cry baby. So it was just so it was like, okay, I went from this person, like, okay, I might have been aggressive and I was hyper dependent and all that stuff. And every once in a while, because of, you know, and this is this is not okay. This is not okay at all. Cause we probably just brought bad things out of each other but me I engaged in like reactive abuse where and they they've admitted like I I do things to get a reaction out of you it's like it was insane like you're doing stuff to get a reaction out of me yet you hate that part of me you want me to be softer and stuff like that it was just crazy so it was just like and then to be called like a crybaby and all that stuff so I went from being hyper and in, hyper independent all this stuff, not crying, not doing all this stuff. Then when I finally, I calm down, I try to have a conversation, I express myself because I'm saying something that goes against how you feel about yourself or maybe it's hurting your ego. Now it's, I'm angry, you're a crybaby, you're gonna fall apart regardless. That's what it is, cool.